tonight by that I mean 20 shows ladies and gentlemen 20 shows tonight thank you, thank you very much nice to have you here welcome to the show we're going to get started now by meeting our first guest she's originally from Hartford, Connecticut she enjoys swimming and bike riding she says that she's not that concerned about a man's looks but she admits that she is concerned about a man's shoes please welcome Shelly Mason a big hand for Shelly Mason Costello Shelly come on out here my father worked this business just like his father before him you wouldn't think three generations could survive off a screw business but we have but times have changed the same screw we sell to the government for eight dollars well the Japs are making it for six cents. And I gotta be competitive. I gotta lay off 20 people. 20 people. 20 lives. But if I don't, I can kiss that dream car goodbye. I've tried everything to cut down on expenses, reduce the safety standards, hired illegal aliens. I even offered to cut wages. I'm at the end of my rope. 20 people, 20 lives. But if I don't, I will lose that car. And if I lose that car, I'll lose Susan. Some of these people are like family to me. Mrs. Gemmell raised me when Mom took sick. Old me and Mentello served in the same war with my dad. And Mrs. Freeman, well, she was with the company in the beginning with Gramps. 20 people, 20 lives. But if I lose that car, along with Susan, I don't think I could live. My grandfather used to preach that a man has to work to have any self-worth. That without work, life just seems to lose its value. But he also taught me the lesson about the bottom line. 20 people. 20 lives. No car, no Susan, no life. I hope they can find work. Uh, what do you guys think of Downtown starring John Mason? We hate him. Not a hell of a lot. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> we hate him. Anything else? Harry Mason? Right? Is he? Is that who it is? Perry Mason. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? John Mason. The big blonde guy. Not oh, too bright. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's That's no nice. good for nothing. No. I can't believe you can find one person who'd like to show. I ask one. everybody. It can't help it. Everybody hates it. Couldn't you ask them to say they like it? A couple, I asked them, and they said... Okay, we're back, and welcome to downtown, and this is our 20th show, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, 20 shows under our belt. It doesn't seem like it, does it? It doesn't, no. Uh, it seems like much more. Yeah. It seems like we've done, we've been working years at this. Well, someday. We're going to show you some of our blessed, blessed clips tonight, and we're going to yeah. start off with are, what? They're pretty much blessed. What's the first one we to start with? Oh, it's the one with uh, Nikki Levine. Nikki Levine, our investigative reporter, who investigated... Demand Industries, that was out in oh, Connecticut, right? The defense was, plant. It was a great report. Okay, let's go to it right now. Oh. Nikki Levine, our investigative reporter. Take a look at this. Yeah. Where is it? It's right over here. Oh. Uh, before we bring out Pocosi in the Horn, I'd like to read a letter from one of our audience members. 
It reads, Dear John, why or why don't you report some serious news? Will Schreiner has serious guests on his show that discuss the hard issues. Aren't you concerned about what's going on around Connecticut? Signed, Laurie Strom, New London, Connecticut. Now, Laurie, we are concerned about the serious issues here in Connecticut. In fact, that's why we're going to go right now to our Y team inve <laughs> investigator, Nikki Levine, where she's out at a site right now. And for those who don't know what she's doing, Nikki is investigating Demand Industries. Now, that's a defense plant here in Connecticut that was accused, according to the Hartford Current, of dumping high toxic waste or high toxic chemicals into clean water. Now, Nikki, the question I want to know, and people out here want to know, is why or oh why did Demand Industries dump dirty little things in water? Johnny, the same reason you buy your clothes at Marshall's. Johnny, we're out here outside of a drainage ditch at Demand Industries, and you are correct when you say that the current reported that Demand allegedly dumped high levels of toxic chemicals into this local town's drinking water. Nikki, just how dangerous are these chemicals? Let's just say I'd hate to be a squirrel right now. But, Johnny, I've been reassured by Demand Industries that they followed all the necessary state guidelines. In an example of good faith, they gave me this beautiful Rolex watch for the unbiased report I've done on this story. Nikki, do you think that's very ethical to take gifts from these companies? Johnny, just don't forget that the last major industrial story I covered netted me an award for the company involved in that unfortunate incident. Remember, I won the coveted Golden Muzzle Award from Union Carbide. And don't forget that Shell is flying me to Louisiana tomorrow, all expenses paid, to put to rest any lingering doubts about that little problem they had at the refinery down there. Now, Nikki, are we in danger here at the studio? Now, Johnny, you know I've been covering the state for four months now. And in an example of good faith, I volunteered to test this water myself. Nikki, I, I don't think that's a good idea, Nikki. Johnny, just as I thought, another example of the press media blowing a situation completely out of proportion. <coughs> Nikki, can you hear me, Nikki? Johnny, like I said before, if you can't trust the government, who can you trust? <coughs> Nikki, can you hear me, Nikki? Okay, I guess we're having some technical difficulty, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. We're going to see what's wrong with Nikki in a few minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Downtown with John Mason. What a great piece, wasn't it? Oh, oh that's that was terrific. That was a great piece. Now, Nikki Levine did take a two-month sick leave after that. Oh. But uh, she's fine. She's going to be back the next show. Oh, she's got some body on her. Huh? She is. She's a hell of a reporter. And that's yeah. the main thing. That's why she's with us. Right. right. Uh, also, we have coming up an Irv Goldfarb review uh, on uh, a feature movie. Great. I could tell you things about him. He's your best friend, isn't uh, he? Where's is Oprah your best friend? Where, no, no, no. <laughs> it's you and Jerry, and Gail, Gail and, Oprah, and Oprah, and me and Irv. Right. Yeah, pretty much. That's triple. Uh, stay with us for the a real review uh, from Irv Goldfarb. We'll be right back. Which one was this? That was the one with uh, Bamboo Street. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say you can tell me away from my God. There's nothing you can do because I'm stuck like glue. Hello, I'm Mario Balboa. I'm here in the new Balboa Beauty Academy to tell you about our exciting career training program. If you want to be a hairdresser, or makeup artist, or manicurist, or uh, any one of the other exciting career opportunities presented in the beauty field, then BBA is the place for you. Let's take a look at some of our students being trained for the exciting and glamorous world of beauty. Mario, our customer's hair is their most prized possession. That's why when I'm cutting someone's hair, I take every precaution to ensure that their safety and their well-being is ensured. I like to cut someone's hair as if I was cutting my own. Ah! At BBA, you can train to become a professional hairdresser all at the customer's expense. Where else can you get such valuable hands-on training while you're on the job? Ah! You butcher! Butcher! I'm never coming back here! Come back! Come back! I'm not finished! Oh, Mario, I'm 
don't think I'm cut out to do hairdressing. What are you talking about? What do you mean you're not cut out for this stuff? No. Cutting is the name of the game here. Cutting out all of that stuff. Huh? You're halfway to the program. You can't get a refund on your deposit either. Do you remember to sharpen your scissors? I just had them sharpened last week. Oh. Mario, come quick. Come and take a look at this. He's got a wicked hangnail. Whoa, I've never seen nothing like that before. That's pretty bad. In addition to all this valuable hands-on training with experienced professionals and modern equipment, we also offer special classes with our business consultant who will show you how to get a job if you graduate. Remember, you gotta really want the title. You gotta stay hungry. Don't eat for a few days, you got it? Women, weaken legs! You know, as I walk through the BBA, it just warms my heart to see the same customers coming back again and again because they trust our professionally trained staff. You're all done. Isn't that right, Terry? Huh? On this, the happiest day of my life, I'd only trust my well-being and beauty to you, Mario. Mario! My perm didn't take! Oh, we could take care of that. Oof. Oh, that's much better. Another satisfied customer. Join the team at BBA, Balboa Beauty Academy. Okay, Parrot, what do you think of uh, Downtown starring John Mason? Downtown? I tried watching it. God, I couldn't even go sit through 15 minutes of that movie. Are you kidding me? Almost fell asleep. Actually, funny enough, my wife's squawking next to me, you know? Maybe I would have fallen asleep. I don't know. I'll tell you. I don't know. If you ever think I'm going to watch it again, though, you got to be crazy. Jesus. I'll tell you. What do you think of John Mason? John? What? I never even heard a word about the guy. He was some, some kid on TV, you know, whatever. I don't know. Like, his, oh, God. I can't believe you couldn't find one person who liked the show. I just Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our 20th anniversary tonight. Uh, 20 shows, that's what we're celebrating. And we have for rear f Everything is real with us. <laughs> it is. Rare right. footage, rare clips. We it's have scary. a clip from Irv Goldfarb, our movie reviewer. Oh, that was rare. That was you don't see many like that clip. <laughs> it was a rare one, that's right. Let's take a look at it right now. Irv Goldfarb reviewing a feature film on the market tonight. What, what's the name of the film again? What? Okay. Take a look at it in your, in your uh, just take a look at it, will you? Oh, hi. I'm Irv Goldfarb from WHCT. I'm going to Hartford Community Television in downtown with John Mason. You know, when a new film comes out, we, the public, usually don't get to see the stuff that, as we say in the biz, is left on the cutting room floor. Well, Rambo 3 with Sylvester Sloan has just come out. The new $63 million epic, and originally Sly promised us a new character, a new sensitive Johnny Rambo. But because of peer pressure, the movie now has over 100 acts of different violence. However, through my connections, I have found raw footage of the original Rambo 3, the way Sylvester Sloan originally wanted it shot. Let's take a look at it now. Go forward, men! We've got the place surrounded. Throw your gun out so no one gets hurt. So what's the scope, Chief? Mo, oh, it's you. I knew it would be long before the press got here. You people don't miss a trick. Now this will probably be your page one. Oh, come on, Chief. Don't give me the run around. Who have you got in there? You ready for this? We got an actor who flipped out took some English teacher hostage. An English teacher? Not only that, that the guy shoots up the place, recites a line from Macbeth, drags a dame off and the hold up in his barn for the last two hours. What kind of weirdo would do that? <laughs> what the hell's going on in there? Before this guy flipped out, he went out to his car and stocked up on an arsenal of ammo. This could make a really good story. I wonder what's going on in the barn with that poor girl. To bees or not to be to be or not to be. That's my question. Look! The line is to be or not to be. That is the question. Now what is the problem? You've had me hold here for two hours and you still can't seem to memorize your line. You know, maybe you're in the wrong line of work and, and you should project. You're mumbling. Okay, wait. I got it. I think I got it now. Here, here, take my script, all right? Got it down? You don't know the first thing about Shakespeare. What play did that come from, huh? Uh, of, uh, of mice with men, I think. Well, you thinked wrong. 
It was from As You Like It. Oh, name some other Shakespeare plays. Two Gentlemen of Verona Ring a Bell? How about The Taming of the Shrew? And what about your all-time favorite Measure for Measure? I tried my best! Ah! What the hell's going on in there? Okay, okay. So we go over your lines again. Well, that was downtown, and I'm sure your newspaper can't wait to get a hold of this. This guy has no family. He's a Virgo who's been a loner all his life, hates cops, hates the law, and questions all authority. Is the girl in danger? Only if he decides to recite Macbeth. Macbeth? I've got to do something. I've got to help that girl. Son, why don't you let the girl go so no one will get hurt? We're willing to forget the whole thing happened, as long as you agree to reimburse the theater for the damage you caused. What do you think, kid? Is it a deal? I'm still making deals with you people! The only way I'm coming out is if you send in 400 of your men, and even then I won't quit. I'll never say die! It's not worth it. Please, give up. I'll never give up. When I was six years old, I was in my first play in school. I played a vegetable in Alice in Wonderland. And my teacher said I was typecast for that. And I didn't even know how to type then. Well, ever since then, I decided I was going to become the greatest actor that ever lived. What do you think? Could I still be? Look, look. I'll be honest with you. You need a lot of work. Your English pronunciation is terrible. You don't say your T's, and when you speak, it sounds as if you have marbles in your mouth. You know, you were born too late. Nowadays, in most movies, you need to talk. What the heck's going on in there? Okay, okay, let's take it from the top. We'll do uh, Timmons of Athens. Well, if we don't solve this real quick, we're going to be one less English teacher. If only we could find someone he knew. Someone he'd listen to. Mind if I try? I think I can talk to him. Who the heck are you? Let's just say I'm a friend of the family. It's worth a shot, Chief. I mean, what do we have to lose? Go ahead. But he's armed to the gills. To be or not to be? To, to be... Or nuts to be. To be. Hello, Johnny. It's your best friend. The only man you can talk to. The only man you can cry to. The only man who ever beat you at shoots and ladders. Still a sore loser, huh, Johnny? I say we rush the barn and get them ourselves. That might upset him, Chief. That's one man you don't want to anger. Watch your fire, man. You wait a minute, Pierre. I'm calling the shots. Nobody's telling me how to run this show. Chief, let me ask you. How many men have you got? Four, maybe 500, counting the volunteer fire department. I know this doesn't make sense to you, but you're at a disadvantage. What? He's just one man. Listen, Tuts, he's no ordinary man. Well, I appreciate your concern, Frenchie. Give me a break. Believe me, Chief. I hope he does. Beautiful job, beautiful job. Now the, the that colonel guy is good, huh? Yeah. Well, he was uh, handsome. Well, yeah. I like the little beret. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. So what else do we have? Oh, we've got... You wouldn't believe what we've got. All right, well, let's stay tuned, right? Oh, if I were you, I would. All right, let's stay tuned. Be with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is this is lousy book. Looking for trouble? Oh, no, 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 well, I'm not. Well, we are. Huh? And you should be, too. Oh, but, but, huh? Did you know that one out of every four adults in America has high blood pressure? Huh? Yeah. And half those people don't even know it. Getting your blood pressure checked is quick, easy, and painless. Oh. Find out if your blood pressure is high. We want you to keep out of trouble. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Uh, yeah, I, am, I, I watch Jerry Brooks, but I'm uh, not an objective observer because he's a sort of a longtime friend, uh, okay. a guy I like, you know, as a person as well as a newscaster. Do you think he's funny? Oh, yes. I think he does some very good stuff. You watch the Brooks file? What do you think of the Brooks file? 
uh, by and large, it's pretty good. Every once in a while, he hits a dud, but everybody else does too. But by and large, it's very good. Okay. He's funny sometimes. He's a good guy. <laughs> so, I guess uh, medium people say he's funny. I don't think so. Do you ever watch the Brooks file? Uh, once in a while, for when I'm not working at the afternoon, I do, but uh, I get to relate and, uh, you know, if I could get after that uh, bus company for transmitting, I can maybe listen to my programs or watch the TV right out of the picture, yeah. but there's nothing I can do about it, so they said the next five years, the bus company will move from Venice Street to wherever they're going to go. So he's nice looking. Um, he's very creative. He's funny. Victor, how you doing? What do you think of Downtown starring John Mason? Oh, I think it's awful. Oh, it's terrible. Hideous. No good. And, uh, and Jerko, what do you think? Oh, I think it's just terrible. You couldn't find one person at the Taste of Hartford that even saw the show. Who was Jerko in there? <laughs> Okay. I, I happen to like Jericho. We're, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, celebrating the 20th anniversary of uh, Downtown. And uh, again, these are some of our rarest clips. Uh, these are rare. These are rare. Uh, you know, You're John You're not going to see them anywhere else. That's right. Ever. Thank God. No, never. Yeah, never John kids me about my relationship with Jerry Brooks. Well, we are tight. In fact, I watched his car last year. Yeah. Uh, and I remember of that. Of course, uh, we have a clip of Jerry as a young child, don't we? This is the oh, downtown's yes. yeah, version yeah, I, of what we believe to be Jerry Brooks as a young right. child. There was, there was rare footage of him as a child. <laughs> everything is rare. It was very rare. Like, I had I a steak the other night that was rare. It was, and it was it just, very rare. Everything's tying in. <laughs> I get it now. This is a beautiful show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, uh, are we going to take a look at it? Oh, this is the rare footage this is the of rare Jerry footage. Brooks as a child. Right. And it's funny because he looks a little like you. Oh, yeah. As a child, he, he there was a similarity. Do you think that's why you developed a closeness? I don't know what it I'm is. I'm sorry, just, I shouldn't ask questions because that's. Let's just take a look, look at the clip. Okay, yeah. here it is. Morning, children. Time to take your seats. School is about to begin. And that means you too, Jerry. In class, I want you all to put on your thinking caps now. We're going to start with our math today. Five plus three minus six divided by two. <laughs> two plus two plus four divided by two. <laughs> times one minus eight divided by two. <laughs> Gerald Brooks, what is the matter? I'm sorry, Miss Havens. I just had a funny thought. You're not funny. <laughs> now, little Billy Patrick, let's give Jerry a chance to talk. I was just thinking about my love for the Oreo cookie, Mrs. Havens. <laughs> See, that's not funny. Nice hairdo, Jerry. Kids, everybody's different. Billy wants to be a baseball player. Tammy wants to be a nurse. And Jerry, I think by looking at your hair, you'd like to be a hairdresser. Hairdresser? <laughs> I want to be a WFSB news anchor. Sure, Jerry. Why don't we all take an early recess, kids? Yeah! Well, Jerry, you and I both know you need to concentrate more on your schoolwork. I know, Miss Havens. But I have all these groovy, neat boss ideas. Like what, Jerry? Like the time I wrote about the guy who went to the fat farm to lose weight, and he ended up gaining 20 pounds. <laughs> That's just one story. I've got five stories right here. Want to read them? Uh, not, not right now, Jerry. Um, I have so many of your stories. I have a filing cabinet just for you. A filing cabinet? That's it. From the Brooks cabinet, I'm Jerry Brooks. Oh, bravo, 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 bravo.
Uh, that, was, that was great. You know, I cried. I cried in that, that part where he was uh, with the kids and he had to decide between the kids and his career. Yeah, yeah. I, I, me too. It's sort of... You know, this is a really emotional show. This is really... It is for me. It's... it's how many shows has it been? 30? 30? 35, 40, I think. Something like that. Uh, we're going to be right back with our last clip. Uh, stay with oh, us. Oh, no, no. we got to go. Do oh, we can't we fun. watch these all day? Welcome Bridgeboard, by the way. Oh. Bridgeboard? <laughs> Bridgeport's time. That's right. Oh, the week. armpit of uh, civilization. <laughs> and remember, Waterbury, send your tape back if you want another show. <laughs> and Plainville. <laughs> we love you, Plainville. Stay with us, Bolton. We'll be right back. <laughs> Downtown with John and John. What about Farmington? <laughs> bad. My job's dangerous, but each stunt is well rehearsed. Nothing's left to chance. Now there's one thing you can't pay me to do, smoke. You know it increases your risk of heart attack. It's just too dangerous, and uh, that's one risk I won't take with my life. Let's do it again. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. I, I can't believe that you couldn't find anybody that liked the show. I picked up my scabs and look what happened. John, listen to me, Ron. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we'd like to thank you for being with us tonight. Thank all the cable stations that are with us. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown when you've got worries.